Hi everyone and welcome to What's Up Wednesdays. My name is Azucena Gonzalez. I'm a realtor of Mojican Associates and I'm here today to talk to you about the difference of being pre-approved and pre-qualified, okay? You're probably thinking, wait, aren't those two words interchangeable? Well, they're not. It's kind of like you can call a rectangle, you can call a square a rectangle, but you can't call a square a rectangle, right? There's little things in there. So let me tell you what is up. So being pre-approved is like what you want to be because you, all know, you know that there are no uh, surprises, no unpleasant surprises at least. You know that once you go through, you're under contract, you're going through, it's smooth sailing because you are good to go. I'll explain why. But that's the thing about being pre-approved. When you're pre-qualified, it's a little shaky. Your foundation is not as strong, okay? And indeed, you would want a strong foundation in which to submit a contract on because you want it to be a successful contract that in that that way you know you could everybody ends up happy sellers happy you're happy buying the house and that kind of stuff right nobody likes those kind of surprises we are like what do you mean i don't qualify or snap the deal fell apart because buyer couldn't qualify and in situations like that it is likely that you can lose your earnest money depending on what time it happens in throughout the transaction so i'm just saying like you got to be very careful and the thing is that sometimes uh, even lenders might use the words interchangeably a little, but it's super important that you stay on top of it and that you ask these questions. And that's why I do these videos, right? Because I want to make sure that you are very knowledgeable in what you're doing because this is a huge transaction. It was for me and for many people out there. I know it's, the, for, it's, I know it's a big transaction for you as well. That being said, being pre-qualified means that you call the lender up, right? You're like, oh, awesome. I saw a house that I like because I drove by. I can see it says this. it's this much because there's one of the informational sheets that are hanging out there from the from the listing outside the house. Um, it's worth 225 I think I qualify for 225 So-and-so referred me to a lender. Let me go ahead and call them and see if I can get pre-qualified. You call them, give them all your information over the phone. I make $17 an hour. My significant other makes twenty dollars an hour we both work full time you know we get this this and that and this is what our credit scores are and that kind of thing right and then uh, they're like okay lender over the phone says you pre qualify for this much perfect we qualify for the house yay how exciting let's go ahead and talk with that lender i mean with our realtor and like let's set this puppy up right they go through super excited submit an offer submit the pre-qualification letter with the offer things are going lender is starting to ask for documents right because we need well they need those documents in order to verify that all the information that was given is correct and bam they find out that you don't actually work part-time i mean full-time you work part-time that's going to make a change in the income you know your credit score is not where you said it would be and there's a little bit more debt that you forgot to include. So that totally changes things and you no longer qualify for the home. That's not a good situation to be in. So that's essentially what could happen when you just pre-qualify. Now, when you are pre-approved, the pre-approval process usually requires, well, not usually, I should say, should always require, but again, I'm not a lender, but if you're looking for somebody, I got you, boo. Um, they require that you provide those documents. For example, my preferred lender, I, we did this recently. I went to go pick up documents from a client. Um, it was just easier for me to go pick them up for, for them and take it to uh, my preferred lender. That way, um, you know, they just had to leave work for like two minutes down the street and meet me. And it was just easier for them than having to drive all the way. So... They were, take, they were taking a trip. So, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I will meet you, boo. Like, I totally get it if after work you want to take off to Universal Studios. I got you, boo. Let's do it. I'll go meet you and let me get these documents from you. And I got you back. I'm just saying. But, um, you know, they'll ask you for documents. Your W-2s, 30, uh, two years of W-2s and 1099s if you have that. Um, okay. So if you're like, well, what's a 1099? Don't worry about it. People who have 1099s know that they get them. If that's you, get those two. You need um, 
uh, an identification card. So that can be an Arizona identification card or a driver's license, okay? Also, um, you need, um, usually, uh, you need one month of bank statements. They will be requiring more, but they only ask for one at first. Um, my preferred lender does at least because by the time they need the other ones, you will need more recent months versus the one you just provided. And then um, pay stubs for 30 days. So depending on how you get paid, weekly, daily, bi-weekly, monthly, I don't know, however you get paid, um, it has to show 30 days of that, okay? So just something to be mindful of. And there can be more documents needed depending on your situation. So if somebody's pay paying uh, spousal maintenance, child support, any kind of garnishments, um, and those kinds of things will also need to be taken into consideration and then additional documentation will be needed at that point, right? But the, my preferred lender will tell you, of course. But the thing is they have all these hard facts, right? Because they have these documents from all these reputable sources, right? Don't go manufacturing fake ones. Don't do it, please. Like, honesty goes such a long way, and we just want to help you, but we can't help you if you're not being honest. Like, we'll do what we can, but it's essentially, we're not creating that strong foundation if we're not all being honest, okay? So let's just, you know, honesty goes a long way. Um, they take those documents, right? And then they can say, okay, I have these facts here. They're staring me in the face, and I can tell you that you pre you are pre-approved for all this perfect you then don't have to worry about um getting denied because they go through it again once uh it goes into underwriting and all that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about like oh my god are we gonna get it okay however <laughs> and we i i probably i i say i say this often and i don't say it enough and other people don't either. Don't mess it up for yourself and go buy a car or make a new purchase of some sort using credit or something. No, don't do it. Fight the urge. Don't quit your job. Don't do this. Don't do that. Because that will make everything go kind of ugh. Okay, so yeah, just hold off just a little bit. Wait until you get the keys to your house and then you can run havoc. Okay, you do what you want at that point. But up until then, you know, in línea everything orderly because we don't need no surprises you don't need any surprises okay so yeah so <laughs> i kind of went off on a couple of tangents there but okay again pre-qualified facts over the phone nothing verified really just kind of a general estimate right versus being pre-approved hard facts are given you are given a solid response of like this is how much you approve for and you're good to go Remember, unless you change something, which don't change it. I cannot stress that enough. People have quit their jobs. People have bought cars, have bought new furniture sets, have done all kinds of stuff. And you're just like, oh, what happened? <laughs> like, you're, Oh my God. And then sometimes they get upset because they don't get the house. And it's like, you know, it's not my fault. Like, you shouldn't have done that anyways so this is why i'm gonna say it. i'm gonna keep saying it say it forever all right so that's the difference if you have any questions let me know comment below um text me call me you can also get at me you're like oh who's your preferred lender i work with some magnificent people okay and not all lenders are the same even if you have one already it's always good to get a second opinion okay and don't worry about your credit and that kind of stuff because if it's in a certain time period you are fine but I'm going to tell you, ask that question to my lenders and they can give you their answer on pulling your credit kind of thing. Because sometimes it can work a little magic. So I'm just saying, call me, get at me, let's get this done. All right, until next time, see ya, bye.